This video is brought to you by Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist, my new book which is a comprehensive guide to all aspects of music theory necessary for playing rock guitar. From blues to the cycle of fifths, from understanding and using modes to choosing the right notes for a melodic solo, from pentatonic scales to chord construction and keys, it's all covered in a clear and concise manner. With accompanying video demonstrations, jam tracks and tabs, you learn to use the knowledge you gain in accessible ways that make sense for less than the cost of a few guitar lessons. Check out the link in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robs and Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, um, it seems that every decade or so, I've noticed, I'll kind of been around that long, um, that there is usually a pronouncement made by some headline-grabbing music industry pundit that rock music is in its dying days. Certainly classic rock, dad rock, if you like, is um, drawing its final breath and give it a couple more years and, uh, you know, it won't be around anymore. Nobody will be listening to it. It will be nothing but a footnote in the annals of music history. And usually when that happens, a band will come along and absolutely blow that prediction out of the water. As happened earlier on in this century, I'm thinking now, gosh, it's about 20 years ago, um, you know, there were many predictions that uh, rock music was, as I say, certainly classic rock music was um, on its way out. And then along came a band that really rather disproved that. And this is one of their more famous solos. Yes, indeed, that is the solo from the absolutely global mega hit Love Is Only A Feeling by The Darkness. That um, that debut album, Permission To Land. I know I'm going to get uh, shouted at in the comments here, but I think that's just a great classic rock album. Could it be a classic, classic rock album? I, I, I think it's, you know, with the benefit of time and the benefit of hindsight and you, you let the dust settle a bit, I think it uh, stands up well against many greats in the classic rock genre, which is why I thought I'd um, have a little bit of, look, of a look at uh, one of the solos from that album today. So you've heard what the solo sounds like. Uh, here's a little bit of an explanation about what's going on in the solo. Solo explanation. Okay, so beginning as always by taking a look at the chord sequence we're playing over, which goes like this. So many people might look at that chord sequence and think, well, it begins on a G chord and it ends on a G chord. And that must mean we're in the key of G. We're not. We're actually in the key of D. Um, there's no rule that states a song has to begin and end on the tonic chord of the key that it's in. Um, a lot of songs uh, begin on what in this case is the four chord, which is the G. Um, it just sets up a nice kind of bit of um, momentum that resolves when you finally do get to that, um, that D chord. Anyway, we're in the key of D major and not surprisingly, uh, we're going to be using the D major scale, uh, which consists of the notes of D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. And in most cases, uh, wherever we're kind of hanging on to a note or, um, you know, kind of prioritizing a, a particular note, it'll be because it's a note that's in the underlying chord. So a good example of that is the first lick in the solo, which uh, is just basically hanging on to this B note here, 12th fret on the second string. Like that, okay? And uh, that B note there is the major third of the G chord, which is happening at the time. And then we go to a D chord, and we go... 
slide down to the A note at the 10th fret on the uh, second string. And that A note is the uh, fifth of the D chord that's going on. So a lot of um, you know emphasis on strong chord tone. So that little lick goes... Back down to the D note there. And then this little run here, which goes... Okay, once again, finishing on the G note there, which is part of the G chord. So let's do that again. And then... So that's... After we reach that E note there at the ninth fret on the third string, we do a pull-off from 11 to 9... Come on to the D note at the 12th fret on the uh, 4th string and then go uh, E to D, that's 9 to 7 on the um, on the 3rd string and then go and there's a brilliant example of chord tones because we've hit the G chord again here and we're just stating the notes of that chord and nothing else. The G major chord consists of a G, B and a D note and what we're getting here is a D note going to a B note and finishing on the high G there, so, uh, and then we go up to, um, the, uh, 17th fret for a little bit of arguably D major pentatonic bendy kind of stuff for a, a, a bar or so, so we're just bending that E up to an F sharp and grabbing the A note on the top E string there, so also at the 17th fret. Then we play this little kind of pedal tone lick where we're playing the 17th fret on the first string and then going to the 15th fret on the second string then return to the, that it high A note there on, on the top E string and then come down to the C sharp there. And that again is an example of, you know, kind of resolving on chord tones. That's that A note there. And this 14th fret note on the B string is a C sharp. That is the root and major third of the A chord, which is happening at the time. And we just come down to here. Now, this is a good example, uh, this next bit, of um, how it's, uh, to begin with, because of, you know, having to come down and all this kind of that stuff we've just been talking about. There, let me do that again. That opening uh, lick there is just genuinely more accommodating to play down on this part of the neck. Uh, but when he returns to that motif, that theme, if you like, he plays it up here. Same notes, okay? So there's an advantage to knowing note locations, or at least knowing where notes repeat themselves on the neck of the guitar. So now we've got... Like that. Just pure D major pentatonic, that thing there, because we're using the A, B, and D notes. You can kind of think of it as coming out of this pan. Anyways. And then more of this kind of bendy stu stuff. Like that. All of that uh, section there is just D major pentatonic. And then we have this uh, descending thing here, which is where the harmony part comes in. Um, basically, we're playing... That little run there, just coming down D, C sharp, B, A, G, and then back up to A again. So we're back to using the full D major scale. And that uh, little descending run is harmonised a sixth higher. Um, so what do I mean by a sixth? Well, you just go six notes up the D major scale. This is a D note here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That takes us to a B note. And we just kind of track that run. Coming down in um, the same kind of uh, fashion, but everything is six scale steps high. And conveniently landing... The lower guitar part there is landing on an A note and the um, the higher note there is an E, two of the notes from the underlying A major chord. 
So what can we learn from this solo then? Well, it's a good you, a good example of using both a major scale and the pentatonic scale. Um, many, many examples of uh, phrases which exploit notes from the underlying chord. A little bit of harmony work. And as I say, um, we can um, see clear evidence here that, um, you know, Justin Hawkins knows where his notes are on the neck of the guitar, which is always an advantage because he played this... Up here, the first time he played that little motif. And then up here, same notes, just on a different string when he uh, returns to it. So there you go. That's what's going on in this solo. Now you know what to do. Go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab for the solo in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it, that explanation you've just seen there, and a jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, and the link is, as always, in the description. $3 or £3 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources that go along with these YouTube videos. And of course, a massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are down in the description description yeah so rock music is dead well i did um a video a few weeks ago now uh where i was uh, talking about some of my favorite um kind of current or reasonably current rock bands that um many of them are still uh going strong releasing uh albums touring and playing to big crowds i'm thinking of bands like king king bad touch uh dirty honey tyler bryant and the shakedown um i think it's high time that one of those bands or a band of that nature were uh would, would kind of break through and and have the same impact that the darkness did a couple of decades ago we can live in hope but one thing i can tell you is that um to quote mark twain uh when it comes to classic re uh, rock reports of its death have been greatly exaggerated and that is the video for today folks hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it entertaining and informative in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and other things as well it's a great way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.